We seem to not like things with a lot of gangly legs. I blame much of our society's spider hatred on this fact. And we also tend to be a bit weary of things with big stabby fangs for some reason. So for the centipede, which has sometimes hundreds of gangly legs, large fang like structures and the body of a snake, getting the public to not want to kill it with fire is going to be a, a bit of an uphill battle. But here we are. Welcome to the insect spotlight project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, or any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Today, we are talking about the class Chylopoda, better known as the centipedes. Centipedes are an ancient group of arthropods with a fossil record stretching back 400 million years. For reference, dinosaurs appeared around 200 million years after that. And they've diversified quite a bit in that time. Chylopoda contains over 3,000 described species, and that's believed to be a small part of their total global diversity. And while most centipedes are going to be found in the tropics, Chylopoda has a far-reaching distribution across every continent outside of Antarctica. And they've colonized a variety of habitats, from caves to deserts to beaches. Now, if you've watched my millipede video, you know that centipedes and millipedes belong to the subphylum Myriapoda containing the Chylopoda, the Diplopoda, the Parapoda, and the Symphyla. What you may not have realized is that Chylopoda is believed to be the earliest diverging of these taxa. I won't get too in the weeds with their evolutionary history, but this means that Chylopoda's sister group, the closest living relative, is the conglomerate of all the other Myriapoda. So even within the Myriapods, the centipedes are pretty special. Despite this, I understand how people might mix these myriapods up with one another. So let's take a second and talk about how you can be sure you're looking at a centipede. Well, for starters, centipedes are elongate. They are danger noodles, spaghetti, not rigatoni. Even the stubbier centipedes are quite lengthy. And for each of these segments on their lengthy body, you'll find a pair of prominent legs flaring outward. So one pair of legs per one segment. This is as opposed to millipedes, which have two pairs of legs per one segment. And I think that just about covers it. Okay, I guess we do have to address the fangs. The fangs that are not fangs. Centipedes are venomous, correct, but those pincer-like structures delivering the venom are actually their first pair of legs. So the first pair of legs on the centipede trunk or body has evolved to work functionally as a part of the head working alongside the mandibles and the maxillae to manipulate prey. And by manipulate prey, I mean stab it and fill it with spicy juice. We call these venom legs a few different names. Forcipules, maxillipedes, maxillipeds, prehensors, whatever floats your boat. So those are the first pair of legs in the chylopoda, but the last pair of legs in the chylopoda are also uniquely adapted. We call the last pair of legs their ultimate legs, and this is a great name for them both because it's the last or ultimate pair, but also because they're pretty impressive in form and function. These legs are not for locomotion. They're longer or often thicker and more articulate, and they're used for a variety of purposes, like defense, courtship, skirmishing with rivals, or as a sensory organ, often multiple of these. So obviously legs are a pretty big part of the chylopoda. So it makes sense that both their common and scientific name refer to their leggy traits. Centipede breaks down to centi, 100, and ped, foot, though centipede leg count can range anywhere from 30 to a couple hundred. The scientific name, chylopoda, actually refers to their forcipules. Kilos means lip, and podos means foot. So chylopoda roughly means lip foot, as their forcipules are functionally mouth parts derived from their front legs. But before we move on from identification, I did want to address the other two groups of myriapods. Parapods look quite different from centipedes, so you should be fine there, but the symphylins can be a bit tricky at first glance. Something to keep in mind is that symphylins are very tiny, like 10 millimeters max, and they lack pigmentation, so they're going to be white or pale yellow. Only the smallest of centipedes are anywhere near that size. Some phylons also only have 11 to 12 pairs of legs, while centipedes will always have more than that outside of some of the babies. But when in doubt, 
Centipedes are danger noodles, so look for those forcipules. And if you want to get really technical, Chylopoda is epistogoniate, so their genital opening is at the terminal end of the body, while the other three myriapod groups are progoniate, so their genital opening is toward the anterior or front end of the body. But don't get bogged down by that stuff too much unless you're deep into taxonomy and systematics. For now, let's pivot and talk about their life cycle and ecology. Centipedes don't have metamorphosis. They just go from egg to juvenile to adult. However, some groups of Chylopoda are anamorphic, meaning they continue to add segments and legs as they grow and develop. Other centipedes are epimorphic, meaning they hatch with the same amount of segments they're going to have all through adulthood. Regardless, the beginning is the same. It starts with an egg. Some centipede mothers will set it and forget it, laying eggs in the soil and continuing on their merry way. However, perhaps surprising given their vicious exterior, many centipedes are doting mothers. These chylopodans will guard their eggs with determination wrapping around them, keeping them clean, and attacking whatever comes close. The mothers will continue to care for the brood even after they hatch. These freshly hatched juveniles are inactive and very vulnerable, so Mama Centipede will keep watch over them until they can stand on their own 200 feet. Once these centipedes are up and moving about, they need to start thinking about dinner. As you could probably tell by looking at them, centipedes are predators. Regardless of what habitat they're skittering around in, other invertebrates beware. Most chylopodans are generalist predators of other invertebrates, but for the larger species, even vertebrates are on the menu. Not that surprising, I guess, since some centipedes are almost a foot long. So now we know what they hunt, let's talk about how they hunt. Centipedes are usually nocturnal, so vision isn't really going to help them much here, especially for the subterranean ones. Instead, they can feel and smell their prey with their long antennae as they move across the forest floor or through the soil. When they happen upon a suitable prey item, which is most things smaller than them, they can strike with impressive speed, delivering powerful neurotoxic venom through their forcipules and restricting their prey in a cage of legs. One thing to remember is despite their massive fangs, centipedes do not drink their food. They've got mandibles under all that glam. They chew their food like the civilized terminators they are. Eventually, they eat enough things, and suddenly, after a quick molt, their gonads work, and they can turn their attention to reproduction. Centipede reproduction can be a bit secretive, but one thing you should know is that reproduction is external. So, after some antennal tapping, the male will create a silken web and deposit on it a spermatophore, basically a package of sperm, which the female can then uptake to fertilize her eggs. Though you can also find examples of asexual reproduction in centipedes through parthenogenesis. And so, the cycle continues. Though to make it to this point, the centipedes do have to, you know, survive. We oft think of centipedes as the predator, but rarely do we stop and consider them as potential prey. Centipedes have things to worry about too, like birds and spiders and such, but they also have strategies to avoid such an untimely fate. As mentioned, centipedes have venomous forcipules. They work for offense, nothing wrong with using them for a little bit of defense. And some centipedes double down on the chemical defense approach and have noxious compounds they secrete along their trunk. And with all these chemicals at play, some centipedes will have bright colorations to warn predators that they don't go down easy. This is called warning coloration, or aposomatism. And sometimes what prevents them from being bird food is simply their secretive habits, squeezing their flat bodies into tight crevices where anything bigger than them might struggle. But in their effort to survive and have some kids, centipedes can find themselves at odds with, well, us. Centipedes can bite us too, and the big ones hurt. A lot. They're not life-threatening, though there have been at least two known fatalities, but they're not fun. And there can always be complications, like skin necrosis in some rare cases, or an allergic reaction. So still monitor yourself carefully if you're bit. Bit? I, I guess stung? Stung? Bit? Stung? For the most part, they don't want you to touch them. So take precautions. Shake out those shoes, and don't go reaching into places when you can't see what's on the other side. Which, honestly, is just overall good life advice. 
But centipedes are not our enemies. They deserve our respect. Anything with venom daggers deserves at least a little respect. But they're not the living nightmares that society makes them out to be. Like I said, for the most part, centipedes do not want you to touch them. And they're going to do what they can to avoid contact with you. The whole shake out your shoes thing is so important because you're unknowingly cornering them with your giant foot. It's a reasonable crash out. And they do a lot of good that goes unnoticed. They are constantly prowling the surface and below it, chasing cockroaches and potential pests into even the smallest of crevices and keeping their populations in check. Kylopoda also has a huge diversity of venom peptides for potential application in the medical field, though a lot more research is needed. And I hear they taste pretty good. I hope I don't need to say this, but just don't go putting random centipedes in your mouth, please. Leave that to the chefs who know how to prepare them and which species to use. So if you want to cater to some centipedes on your property, you need some structural complexity and ground cover. So leaf litter, coarse woody debris, maybe some rocks and stones. You probably won't see them too much, but your local ecosystem will appreciate it. Anyways, thank you all for listening. And if you like the content, please remember to like and subscribe to keep up to date with future videos. And if I missed any fun facts about the Kylopodans, or if you have any favorite species from the group, please leave them in the comments below. I always love hearing about them. Peace, y'all.